Hypersonic glide vehicles are boosted by a rocket motor to a low apogee. They then separate and can glide without propulsion in the upper atmosphere for thousands of kilometers at a speed of up to 20,000 kilometers an hour. The gliders are able to perform maneuvers throughout their flight path to evade defense measures and to conceal their final target. Hence, these gliders may have a target footprint ranging up to 1,000 kilometers in length and width. Then there's hypersonic cruise missiles. These can be ground or air launched and are boosted by a rocket motor to their cruise altitude up to 30 kilometers and a speed of up to 5,500 kilometers an hour. Then the cruise missile separates and performs a powered flight with a range of about 1,000 kilometers. These cruise missiles will use a supersonic combustion ramjet, a so-called scramjet, and they can fly at a speed of up to 10,000 kilometers an hour and are capable of stronger maneuvering than the glide vehicles. Well, the technology has been known about, has been talked about for many years. But I think we're moving from a theory to reality. In this case, if we do nothing, this could take a very bad form. If hypersonic weapons become fielded realities, then we must react. And so when we take a subject such as this seriously, which we do, then we will give priority to it. And we're at that stage right now to understand the technology much better, to use the, the international uh, strength of the, the NATO Science and Technology Organization to its maximum so that we can decide what to do. And we cannot afford not to respond. And part of that response has to be a detailed, urgent, technical understanding of the threats and risks we face. Thank you.